and what's up and everybody welcome back to the channel uh today i decided i'm gonna make some video about um some of the problem y'all might be having with the control of any school days control is you know mostly you know the, the thing that keep the school are going uh if you watch if you're new to my channel or you know anybody else that you know just go on this video hit hit on the subscribe button and um subscribe to my channel for more educated videos i've made a few videos about school day repairs and all this and they all they're very useful for anyone that you know have school days that might be having any sort of problem when you're from any part of school days uh my last two videos or four you know short videos i made out actually you know and i'm doing a project do i want to convert a qr q1 hammer which is usually one drive from the factory to a dual drive so if you are a scooter fan and you have a scooter q1 q1 hammer any other scooter that go single drive is a way that you can make that to dual drive to give you more torque and more power and more speed so this channel is the right channel for you to be on so that way you're gonna get all the information you need about scooters now today i decided to make this video on uh, on the controller so these are the controller look i got two here so let me just pull one on this side so these are the controller looks uh of any scooter it might be different controller this one particular is a controller for qr q1 hammer uh which is um 48 volt 21 amperes you know controller uh there's a lot of control like you know that these scooters are like 3000 watt 60 volt 30 amps controller they be different from this some of them are look very small in the big scooters but it's not the size of it is what uh company that you got inside that's what you know made a controller uh, more powerful to handle those big powers or uh or the small ones so why i decided to make this video is uh, a lot of times these controllers do break down easy and the reason why some of these controllers break down is because of heat because the most part inside uh which are kind of like you know a little black things with three legs on the board uh something if they're not protected be well you know what happens is uh with a constant ride of the scooter in a hot you know areas or hot climate you know uh countries and all of that the scooter get be you know heated and this you know literally something get very hot and when it get hot that way it can blow out those mosses on a on a on a on a on the circuit board or sometimes they can something can happen maybe you know two wise man of task is other producing the heat that can blow those now so uh, the question is is it worth repairing a controller I mean, just like any other part of, uh, you know, electronics or, or electromobiles or whatever it is, any part that happened to break down, the question is, is it worth repairing those parts? Uh, some of the parts might be very cheap, so it saves you time and hassle of all this, like, you know, getting parts from this area, getting, you know, tools and all this. Now, a lot of people have all these tools, you know what I'm saying? I got these handy tools, you know, around me because I keep, like, fixing things right from my cars to all day so i mean i happen to have this but not a lot of people have this you know what i'm saying so it means that sometimes it might be a good idea to replace the whole thing rather than you know forcing yourself throughout you know um face it up but what's the situation where you cannot get the actual replacement like right now as i talk to you, you know the coronavirus lockdown close all the companies so supposing somebody blow their controller right now and you have to order one you might be lucky to get it in time sometimes you might not even get it because some of the con uh the companies some like from uh, china south korea all those one a lot of them shut in america as well a lot of company you know shut down so it's quite very difficult to gain you know all the script for you to get yourself going so that is what this video is about when you're in that situation where even though it might be cheaper to replace the whole unit but you know that you're not gonna get it in time to get yourself going then in my wolf try your hands on it if you can fix what because when the controller get broken it's not a whole controller the controller got so many you know component inside we're talking about the most fat you are uh, we're talking about uh the uh the capacitors we're talking about so many things on the board any of those can go wrong or maybe like you know faulty manufacturers or maybe like some of them are even dry joint dry joint is why Usually the components on the board, the circuit board, or the green board that you see in those comp uh, those devices or uh, any other thing, the things that are soldered on it, some of them are not actually so they 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 not having full contact. So what happens is that when it, when there's a vibration, those components keep like moving into where they've been soldered in. 
so that creating a dry joint. That means that uh, there's a loose contact between that component that's been soldered onto the board and the line that that component is supposed to be on the board. So in those situations, it will just uh, be like in a little one or two things to fix those things and get us a run instead of like you spending a lot of money buying the whole unit. So if you are in a situation like, you know, this controller here from Kiwa people cost $70. So $70 is not a lot of money. So in a way, that's why when, when my got broken, I could have just, you know, go through it, repair, but I decided that I'm just, you know, replace the whole thing because I, I don't have time, you know, to be uh, opening this, you know, chasing up, you know, uh, whatever is wrong on the board, you have to look for that part to buy from somewhere. It might be from the main dealer, like maybe the QR people, but the QR people, what I think, the QR people might not have time to be selling you component parts in a controller they're just going to tell you buy buy the whole controller because they want to make money they don't have time but you might be able to get those parts if you know the part number the name of the part you know you can just order it from some of the third party website and get that thing in so i just order a new one so these two controllers here uh i'm a far from a qrq one hammer the, the, the first one after them this one came original with the with the scooter i bought the scooter uh through amazon the scooter just arrived within like a, a week the scooter just stopped working. I made a video about that on my channel. You can watch that video and explain what happened. Then I end up getting a second controller from Kiowa free of charge because they said to me it's the controller. I replaced that controller and I got the same issue. So I said to them, no way, man, I'm gonna return this scooter because I don't have time to be doing repairs, put everything back and having the same problem. And then what happened is uh, they made me a deal. They said, uh, okay, what do I think is wrong with the scooter? I said, look, the only one I, I'm going to keep the scooter is if they can send me a complete set of the real tire to get out with the motor, everything in a new controller, then I'm going to change the whole thing and be sure that the motor and the tire is a new one coming, a new controller, and then say what? Because at this time, we don't know what's happening because the first controller got broken. We got another new one from the factory got broken. It might be the motor in that tire you know, causing a problem to the controller or whatever it is. So that's how I got these two controllers. So finally, I fixed the scooter with uh, the new motor and the new controller that I'm using for almost a year now as they're working. So these are the old one that came with the scooter before. So what we're going to do today is, if it's worth re replacing the, the controller and it's cheaper, you should do that and get all the hassle free. The controller just arrived like this. You follow my video of installation. If you have QR or any other school, I just follow up the way to install a controller. But I have a video about it on my channel. Look through my video, you're going to see that. You do it that way. But let, let's assume this situation where uh, you don't actually, maybe like this controller costs like, I don't know, you might have a scooter, high end scooter, like a drug from family and all these things. This controller might be very expensive. Let's assume this controller costs $150 and it's broken. What you going to do? You're going to. Or another hundred fifty dollars controller, or you gonna try to see if because if the controller got broken, it's not everything that got broken the controller. It might be just something small somewhere. So in that situation, I'm gonna advise you all to just follow the steps I'm gonna make now, and then try to find out what the problem is rather than spending a hundred fifty dollars getting another controller again and in time when it breaks, so you just keep spending money. Some controller are even more expensive than that. So let's get back to the real deal. So supposing now we have to repair this controller. We don't know what's wrong with it. The, motor, the, the, the scooter just stopped working. Maybe there's a pie in the scooter or, or there's no pie in the scooter, whatever it is. What you're gonna have to do is you need just basic simple tools. Don't be scared of this. I always use this just to get a job done fast. But all you need, you need a screwdriver, a set of plier, a solder, a lead for solding, and you mind the multimeter. I don't have the multimeter here because my got broken up or a new one like the coronavirus has been taking ages to come. So, but I'm gonna demonstrate how to do that. So when you all have that problem, all the stuff you need, you do it that way, you're gonna fix your, your control and get screwed up back. So first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna have to lose the bolt here. Any other controller, whether it's a long one, whatever, you're gonna have to lose these ones. So you can go with a screwdriver, just lose this. Is bolt on the side here. Okay, we got one now. Okay, it's another one. So those are the screws. You just lose the screws out. 
okay and what i do all the time is i like to keep my things you know in a uh, in a way that you know they come so i don't forget it so i know that those three goes to this side so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna lose this side you got a cover plate on this side you got some cover plate with the wires on this side so i'm gonna lose this one right now so i'm gonna just go with a screwdriver as well okay and i'm gonna put these screws on the side why I do it all the time is some of the screws are not the same. So if you assume they're all the same and you mix it up and then you want to reassemble it and then some of the screws can fit in properly, then you got a problem. I just drop one. I'm just pick this one. You want to be sure. It will be uh, nice if you got anything like uh, a cover bottle, a, bot, uh, a cover of a bottle or something. You just put and put the screws in so that way the screw stays, you know, uh, okay. Some people use like uh, a tape. Some adhesive tape and put the screws on it so the screw kind of like I've had to the tape so they're not dropping off doing anything. All right, so it's the last one. So now we keep these five screws on one side, and what I'm gonna do is that's the cover plate with some heat shield the inside. This thing is made to uh I mean, try to you know uh, prevent more heat getting into those vital components. So I'm gonna pull this cover on top of these screws, so that I know that those screws go with our cover. So what what we're gonna do? Some other controllers. When you open this, this might not come easy. This might be hanging with a set of wires or something. So what you're gonna have to do is you let it be, just hang there. And when you finish taking this, before you pull the whole system out, you make sure that you uh put this in a way that it can go through because if you put it this way it's not gonna go through you have to turn it that way to go through but fortunately for this one you can see that it is straightforward so we just pull this on the screw that holder and then we get to the other side we do the same thing just taking out the screws again at the same time i put these screws on a different place so that i know that those ones are for the front if you're lucky that you know whatever you do in the screws you show the screws are all the same then you don't have to worry you just go pour the screws together and when you start putting them back you pick any screws then it will go to the same hole but if you're not sure or you uh just want to just keep it away it came originally just pull the screws separately from you know uh whatever you take them out and put a component or the cover on those screws so this cover here comes with the wire so I can't take this cover out so I'm gonna let this cover just you know hang in there so now what we're gonna have to do is just pull this thing all the way up so now this is just an aluminium casing just to make sure that they use this aluminium because uh, it is very good to uh, you know let the heat get out quick without making a heat stain uh, in the actual you know um, company to make the things hot so now this is your controller board you got a green body with all those, you know, soldiers, beta, you can see those white dot 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 there, so soldiers on it. And you got a lot of various, you know, component on it, uh, resistors, you got some capacitors and all this, some ICs, MOSFETs, MOSFETs, they are on, the, on this side. Those are the MOSFETs that we have to check. That's the first thing that you have to check on a controller, when the controller goes bad, these guys are mostly the copies all the time for most controllers. Sometimes it might not be them, but those are the first thing to check before you start going to the, the complex uh, other things. So your next step will be, if the multimeter is here right now, I'm going to just, you know, turn it on and let you get about Those who don't know the multimeter, it's a sort of like uh, some electric, electronic, you know, device used for testing various components on electric board, just like this. So it comes like a it look like a battery tester that's the closest to it or it look like something that you're gonna see like a scale it's got digital reading or sometimes it's got like an analog you know reading on it whichever you got you know they all the same you know they all doing the same thing so don't worry and it's got two pins it's got two pins like a two wires with a pin at the end so you want that multimeter and what you're gonna have to do is some of the most fast here have rating you have to check but in this case if you don't know you know the popular way or the most common way most people use that you turn your multimeter it's got something on as well like you know uh 
rotating you know knob that goes with numbers you know only those numbers works with someone they work with the ohm some that they work with a voltage or so whatever you're gonna do just turn that one to 20k which is like 20,000 turn it to 20k and then on the controller itself this here is the one that connected to the battery that's the red and black and you can see the wire is a bit thick because the amount of voltage that pass here if the wire is thin it's gonna just bend straight so you have to uh you're gonna have to hold this one the battery one and then what you're gonna have to do next is you take your so let me assume here right now that this is my multimeter which comes with a two pin so this is let's support this another one with a wire so i turn my multimeter to 20k which is twenty thousand on the actual device and i hold the pin so that means use one of the pin to tie the negative side of your battery so the negative side is going to be the black one because the red one is positive so you find out which one where the black one you know come out from here so i'm going to use that one to touch the black one and that's the negative side and now i'm going to use this one the other side and touch just the metal so let me just put this and show you on the camera so once the other one is the negative side, you want to use the other one just to touch the top of that MOSFET, the top, not the plastic heat shield, just the top of that, not the screw, make sure you touch just the actual thing, the white thing you see that just touch the top. And if you got a reading, that means that that's a positive MOSFET. And if you, if you don't have no reading, then that's negative. So you're going to do that for all of them and find out which one is positive, which one is negative. Uh, sometimes you can take you know like a black marker to put a mark on positive like just at a back like if i put my uh the, the the multimeter one terminal to the negative side of the or the battery cable on the controller and then i put it on this one some of the uh multimeter might make a sound some of them just give a reading if i see reading that means that that one is positive if i don't see no reading that means that that one is negative or if i had a noise when i type that that means that one is what uh positive if i don't hear no noise that's negative so if i do all that then the next thing you're gonna have to do is one of these mosfet whether the negative or positive might not give a reading at all so when that happened that's the culprit there's another way as well you know people test this uh that's like a visualization like you know people just look at individual uh, most of they look at them and if you see any of them sure be all a like, different color like like it be all like bang you know or there's a crack on something then they'd be like oh yeah that's a culprit that if you don't want to use the multimeter testing them so if you find that one then you're going to put your attention on that one and then see how you're going to get that one up so for the purpose of this video let's assume that after testing all the most of it, we happen that maybe let's say that this is positive and the next one is negative positive negative positive negative so let's assume that the first one here which is negative is not reading we touch it and it make noise instead of not making noise it is making noise that means like it's faulty so then we go now and turn our multimeter to read the legs here and we see that it's not reading so what you're gonna have to do next is all this most that are hold by screw as well so you're gonna have to lose the screw of that one. So we're gonna have to take the screw into the one that we assume that is wrong. You're gonna have to lose that one. So when we lose that one, all you're gonna have to do is you take a flat screwdriver and put it and try to bend it a little bit forward to go away from the, the heel shield plastic. And when you do that, then you go plug your, your soldering iron thing. You plug it in, and make sure that it's here. Don't use your hand to touch it to feel whether it's here or not. All you're gonna have to do is just uh you can probably have to have a you know a sorting, you know, uh block or something like a, a small black thing that you keep like you know clean this, you know, you clean it on that, and then you bring your leg close to it. If you touch it with a leg, then it starts to bend, it means that this is hot. So you go back now at the back and make sure you're working on the one that you have just taken the, the screw off, not the other one. So this is the one, so you're going to have to turn it this way and then go straight. And you're going to see like you have one, two, three. They got three legs at the back. So just be careful and don't go just like, you know, just unsolding anything. Just pull your attention on those three pins. So what you're going to have to do is just 
Sometimes what people do is that's what I got this plier here. People might use the plier to hold the most fat. You just lose it on that to hold it like this. So let's assume that I just hold the most fat with the plier, just like this. Then they go with their sorting iron, and they go on this. And once they put it here, it's gonna clear all the all the, the, the sorting, all the letters we put it before. It's gonna just melt off. They did that for all the three pins, and then they pull that one out. So when you pull that one out, there's going to be a number on that. Then that's a number that if you're going to be replacing that and you don't know what it is, you can go on Google, just put in the, the number of that most far they all come and then maybe trace that which company can supply you that. Or sometimes you can, you know, go on all these, you know, third party, you know, places like eBay, Facebook and all these things. They might have, like people always selling stuff. You might have somebody actually have a good one, maybe something that's broken on the school, I have a good one, you can buy it down. And tear the most fat to replace this one and then uh, put it back into your uh, your control and get it, the things going so this is a short video i'm making today just to like you know teach you all how to repair your controller so if you were to uh, do all that you know like um test all the individual most fats here and it happened that all of them are good then you know that all this thing is working so your next step is you might want to start testing all the capacity First, if you're getting power into the screw rack, like if you put the power button on, there's a power coming, you can, you know, use the horn, you can uh, use like, you know, like the light, you can put a light on, but the only thing is that the motors are not turning, then your concentration is that you have to go on the line that connect the, 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 the device, like you got a motor, motor line here, so all this, most of are the one that controls the motor, so you have your line, which is this motor line here, you got this green, yellow, blue, and if you trace them back on the board, the first most part here, you have the blue one going, so the negative positive of that will be controlling that one. The second one, you have the yellow one going, and the third one, you have the, uh, which is the green one, you have the, the other uh, two going with that as well. So if you happen to see that your motor is not working, then definitely it's going to be this one. You're going to try to change that. But... If you happen to say that uh, maybe uh, you test all these most are they working, there's nothing wrong with them, then your next thing might be trying to test all the individual capacitors with the reading. And if you don't know how to do that, you can even put into Google, how do I test capacitors on electronic board using the, 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 the multimeter? And then that way, you will know how to do with voltage to put it on, on the capacitor. Some of the capacitors go writing on it, like this one go a thousand microfarad on it. So you got something like a 1,000 UF, so that's a 1,000 microfarad 10, and then uh, that, that should give a voltage of, this one is showing that it's giving a voltage of 663 or something. So because uh, their capacity, they retain, you know, voltage. They, 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 they are positively charged capacity. They're taking current, they, they retain it there, you know, and then they distribute that current to or the part or whatever that needs that so you're going to be going with that and you're going to be testing each individual component on that we whatever reading they should be you know getting if you do all that and then you find that one of them is giving you a negative reading which is not a correct reading that might be your culprit and then you can just change that and get your controller back and working so the question is all this that i said right now somebody might just said oh come on man i don't have time to doing this i'll just you know all i need one that's good that's true but that's the, the problem is how much is that new one cost for instance if it's the motor that your motor is not working everything else is working and you're not seeing usually when some of these scooters break that they show me those signs like exclamation sign that means that it's got nothing to do with the motor. It might have got something to do with your brake line or braking or something. Or sometimes the controller might be faulty and sending that. So that means that you just you don't have to trace this uh, most fast. You don't have to trace that. You just have to trace, you know, all the component on that and find out why they're not giving you uh, instructions like all these, you know, wires here. Like if we got, we have the, the brake wires, we have like uh, the horn and all this. You have all connected to stuff. You have to check. You have to check all of them to be sure that they are working. You know before you know what the problem is. But this is just seventy dollars. So when that happened, I know I could fix this, but I just say you know I don't have time to be you know doing going through all this. So what I did was I just replaced the whole thing. I just got a new one. And even recently in my last videos that about trying to convert um, the QRQ one hammer 
single drive system to dual drive system if you all see well i ordered a new controller from the cure i could easily be repairing this one to use with that but i don't have the time so i say you know what let me just order a new one and i'm gonna repair this one to put as a spare so now i'm going to repair this one i'm on that i'm waiting for my multimeter to come and i was i was going to do this today on the video I was repairing it you know but even that i haven't got the most for it. i have to find you know where to get one of these so I'm going to be repairing, I got two of them, I'm going to be repairing these two to keep them working on and keep them as spare. And then I'm going to use the new one that I ordered to do the dual drive, you know, projects that I've started on the Q1. So this is a quick video to teach you how to repair controller, if your controller broken, if your scooter broken. So the thing is, if you got a scooter and you run your scooter the one day, the scooter is not, the power is on, it's not showing that sign. On the instrument cluster, like exclamation sign or something, there's no other sign. Everything looks normal on the on the instrument cluster or on the throttle body. But then your motors are not working. It might be possible that your motors are gone, which you need to check them and replace them. Or sometimes, uh, the way that we do it as well is, if you put a scooter off and you trying to turn the tire and the tire just me like good, 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 good. The tire is not free moving. It means as that your motor might be having a problem. There's so many ways to, to test that. But the easiest way to do that before you start getting to the bigger thing is just get to the controller. If you have, you know, if this is a $70 controller, so you might just order $170 controller, you know, get it replaced. And if it works, that means that, you know, you don't have to worry it's a controller. But if it doesn't work, before you start getting to the motor and all that part. So I'm going to just end this video here and let you all go on with your day. And you all take care of yourself. It's like hard and a bad day for everyone around the world right now, you know what I'm saying? So you're just going to keep, you know, following the advice of the health officials, you know, don't do any stupid thing to get yourself in trouble. And now it's not easy to be at home, but you can just help yourself and help others out there by staying at home unless you have to go out to get some essential food and all that. And if you're going to be out doing that as well, make sure that you pray yourself, you put your mask on. I know you're going to be saying, oh, come on, man, I feel good. I'm not sick, I'm very healthy, but you never know when that's going to catch you. It's just simple as that. It's not like someone's going to come with a gun on you that you can defend yourself with or something. It's something that you're not seeing. Sometimes it's going to come straight to you. So y'all, please listen to all the health advices going on in whatever part of the world you are and protect yourself and protect other people. It might not be you. You might be healthy, but you might go out there, get it, and give it to your nan, your grandmother, your friend, or some someone else. So just keep yourself in your house and use this time to you know do small projects you know if you got a scooter and you think like okay now i'm afraid you can follow some of my videos to do something with your scooter do some upgrade on it if you got a scooter that's spoiled maybe the controller this is the time that you can use all this time to do something so you're not too bored at home so i'm gonna let you all go on with your uh life and then keep safe share my videos around the world i make videos all the time to help everyone so don't just watch it and keep it to yourself share it to people encourage people to like my video subscribe to my channel because there will be more videos coming on my channel with a new project about a qr q1 hammer converting to the dual drive and all that repair you know videos i'm gonna make to help you all about you know, any other issues you might be having your scooters out there it's a simple video that you follow all the time it doesn't matter if it's qr q1 hammer if it's the ultra g if it's another scooter a scooter has a simple lay you know system they got motors they got controllers and they got battery every scooter that runs like electric scooter they got all this in it the rest is just something outside somebody might make this faster somebody might use bigger batteries somebody might use like high-end controller but the basic step of it is any scooter to move as electric scooter they're gonna have a moto they're gonna have a battery they're gonna have a controller so whatever scooter you got out there whatever other thing you have if you got any problem follow the same procedure and check which sort of controller you have follow the wire connection Follow the steps of chasing out what's wrong with the controller, get it repaired or get it replaced. I made videos about all that. So I'm gonna let you all get on and I'm gonna get back to see, you know, what I'm gonna do today to just keep myself a day occupied. So thanks you all for being on my channel and keep subscribing to my channel. Y'all take care of yourself. Until the next video, I'm out. Peace.